so yeah so we started it together and um it well i was skeptical i didn't really think it was going to help me jules how did you find carnivore so um basically i i haven't got a gallbladder um i had my gallbladder removed when i was in my early 20s and um to start with everything was fine um and i was i was really lucky i never struggled with my diet or um you know, I never had to restrict fats or anything like that. So that was all great. That lasted for about 10 to 15 years. Um, but then I started to get problems. Um, I had acid reflux and had an acidic tummy. So they put me on Lansoprazole. Um, and of course, the drug only worked for so long. So then they had to increase the drug, the strength of it. Um, it again, it, eventually that stopped working. So they had to put me on a different one, a stronger one, a meprazole. Um, and I got to the point, so I was, ha it, over the years, I was constantly having tummy issues with this. It was very uncomfortable, but it got worse and worse. And um, March of this year, it was really, really bad. Um, I was in a lot of pain, but this has been going on for six months or so, you know, where it got to a stage where it was really nasty. And I had an endoscopy, so it was like having a garden hose shoved down your throat, <laughs> really unpleasant. Um, and it revealed extensive gastritis. So the whole thing was, it looked like a map of the world in there, you know, it was, it was really nasty. So um, at that point, I was like, oh, I don't know where to go from here because... I asked the doctor if they could increase the dose of the omeprazole, but they couldn't because there's side effects. So that was a no-no. And I'm thinking, well, I'm, I'm doing everything else I can. Um, you know, I'm not unfit. I'm not overweight. I'm, I'm eating as recommended. They, uh, the doctors told me I needed to eat every two or three hours. Um, which is what I've been doing for years to try and keep on top of the acid because of course it's just constantly dripping into your stomach which causes all the irritation when you haven't got a gallbladder. Um, so I was thinking well I just don't know where where I'm going to go with this I don't know how I'm going to stop this developing into what was in my mind the big C um, because obviously irritation inflammation for a long time that's I think I'm no medical person, but I assume that's what happens and it wasn't a good thought. So I panicked. Um, so I did, did some research, lots of research online and stumbled on YouTube uh, across the carnival diet. I'd never heard of it before. Um, my husband and I both started it together and um, it was really tough to start with because, you know, you'd go into, I'd go into the, the pantry and couldn't eat any of it anymore all the biscuits the cakes the condiments nothing the only thing that we could eat was the salt that was sitting there looking very lonely <laughs> that was in the pantry it was just bizarre very odd experience um and uh, going into the grocery this the grocery store the supermarket again you know 99 percent of it we're just not interested in you just go straight to the meat aisle or the butter aisle um so yeah, so we started it together, and um, it well, I was skeptical. I w didn't really think it was going to help me. Um, I thought it probably would help my husband, maybe because he needed to lose some weight. But for, I, I thought, no, nah, I'll just do it, go along with him. But I didn't really have an awful lot of hope. Um, and a week in, I was thinking, well, oh, I'm starting to feel better. This is weird. Two weeks, even better. Um, a month in and all of my symptoms for the gastritis had gone. I don't need to go and have an endoscopy to, to, to show that all of that inflammation is gone because it feels like it has. It's just, I'm so much better. No acid reflux anymore. Um, yeah, just, just unbelievable. You know, before we started the diet, because I quite like to run, I don't run very far, but I do like to jog. I think it's important for your health to keep fit and what have you, and, and to try and ensure against osteoporosis um, at my advancing years. And um, when I was running, I would get reflux. And it got to a point where um, I would take the little 
uh, acid reflux tablets, the chewable ones, out with me when I went running because I knew that a minute in, I would start to feel this horrible pain. And and it, I actually thought, I'm going to have to stop. I'm not going to be able to run anymore because of this, because this is really not good to have acid in your esophagus all, all the time like this. Um, again, completely gone. So I don't get any of that anymore. And I'm actually now thinking, maybe I can come off the omeprazole if, if I do it very gently and, you know, take a long time over it, do it gradually, I'm thinking I'll call the doctor and see if I can get a reduced dose. Um, so don't stop it immediately because I think that would be disastrous. But potentially I'm thinking I might be able to come off the omeprazole, which is extraordinary <clears throat> because, excuse me, because, um, yeah, I uh, never thought that would happen. So I, I'm just blown away by it, absolutely blown away. And there's other things as well that have improved. So it's not only the um, gastritis, which was the biggie for me, um, and the acid reflux, but um, I apparently my husband tells me I used to snore like a trip hammer. <laughs> and uh, so if I was ever on my back, sleeping on my back, it was a disaster. Um, and apparently that stopped now which i gather now i'm researching it apparently snoring is something that is helped um because it's something to do with inflammation and of course the carnival diet deals with that as well i used to have um sore shoulders again when i was lying in bed i was getting to the stage where i was thinking i'm gonna have to sleep on my back because i can't because my shoulders are too sore too sore and and, and i suddenly realized the other day hey the sore shoulders are gone, that they've just disappeared. I haven't got a problem anymore. It's extraordinary, it really is. And some of these things are like, oh, I used to have that problem and now I haven't got it anymore. I feel so much better. So yeah, brain fog is something else which is gone. And of course, because I'm not snoring and I'm not, um, I haven't got sore shoulders, my sleeping is better. My sleep is so much better. The quality of my sleep i'm getting probably seven eight hours and i was struggling to sort of get five before so it, it is amazing that's awesome and that's <laughs> been sorry how long about three or four months four months yeah just four months wow. so wow. i know people who have got you know some of my friends have got health issues and i'm saying you know you really you've got to try the carnival diet because it has been so brilliant for me and it would help you so much because I'm sure I don't know it. I'm not a medical person, but I think a lot of it is to do with inflammation, but people think you're mad because it is such a, a totally different diet and to cut out all of that processed stuff that we have been brought up to eat and that they, you know, the food industry is making, almost to keep us sick <laughs> so that the pharmaceutical companies can then keep supplying the tablets to treat the symptoms but not get at the core which is what carnival i think seems to me does yeah but then my friends think i'm bonkers so <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i i think um i've i've had that effect on people as well you know especially when i first started because you have such good results. You just want to shout it from the rooftops, right? And Absolutely. Yeah, everyone starts to feel, starts to look at you like, okay, well, you need to, you know, you need to be standing in the middle of a park with a loud hailer or something. <laughs> yeah, you know. Get your orange box out. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's crazy. So, what about your husband? What's he noticed? So he has lost. Um, about 22 pounds in weight um he again his, his sleep is better he's not snoring anymore um he's feeling much better he's piling on the muscle because he goes to the gym he works out um he he's just looking a million times better than he did uh, he didn't take before and after pictures which is a shame because i because we didn't realize that this would happen you know, it was, we just thought, oh, we'll try it. And I was doing it more to support him, really. But, uh, yeah, he's it's amazing. Absolutely incredible. Nice. So 
How are you eating day to day? So um, generally in the morning, I will, well, actually, if I'm at work, then I will have breakfast because I, I need to keep going when I'm at work. So I'll have um, maybe four eggs, fried eggs with a huge slab of butter. Um, butter is really important for me. I, I eat loads of it. Um, and at lunchtime, if I'm at work, I take, tend to take a cot. <laughs> I cook my homemade beef burgers, which is uh, uh, minced beef, a little bit of grated uh, cheddar cheese and um, egg to bind all together. So I make my, my, my burgers and then I'll cook one of those and take it in a little thermos flask cold. And I have that for my lunch if I'm at work. And then in the evening, I'd, I'll have a ribeye with, again, a great dollop of butter, maybe maybe two ribeyes if I'm hungry. <clears throat> um, if I'm at home, um, I try to fast. So it's like a, a mini fast, because without a gallbladder, you can't really do the fasting because, you know, you get too much acid. But um, I find now that I can easily go until two or even three in the afternoon without having anything to eat. And then I'll have maybe four eggs and a ribeye and a huge lump of butter. Um, and then in the evening at about eight, which I know is a bit late, sometimes it's even nine o'clock, it's too late really to eat healthily and have a good night's sleep, but we seem to be fine. Um, we'll have, um, I'll maybe have two ribeyes and a lump of butter. So sometimes I have my own, my beef burger that I've made, but normally it's ribeye. And if I'm at work, I do take my burgers normally. But yeah, so I'm going now from, um, well, I can go from eight in the evening right the way around until three the following day <clears throat> before I need to eat. And I have no pain in my tummy at all. If I tried that before I started the carnival diet, I would have been in bits. I would have been, you know, my stomach would have not been happy at all. So uh, yeah, it that it that too just shows how much better my stomach is feeling because I can go for that long length of time without needing to eat at all how has your appetite changed because I mean it sounds like you're eating a pretty good amount of food during the day but um has your appetite kind of reduced <clears throat> do you feel um I it yeah, I definitely don't. Definitely, I don't. I don't need to eat um, as much. I guess because I'm having a lot of fat, a lot of butter, um, that must be providing the, the calories. I guess because I don't think there's that many calories in sort of two and a half steaks or three steaks, um, sort of four steaks. Um, yeah. So, but I'm I'm eating far less frequently and not as much on my plate. I used to love vegetables. Um, that was a real biggie for me, giving them up. It felt like it was very wrong because I'd been brought up and all my life I've been, I was actually vegetarian for a few years. <clears throat> um, and, you know, vegetables were an important part of my, my diet. Um, so to cut them out completely, that was, that was huge and felt very odd. Um, it felt like we were going down this path of that not many people had trodden before and it was felt a bit dangerous, you know, <laughs> just going carnival. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it is absolutely amazing. And now I don't miss the vegetables at all and I don't crave carbs. Initially I did. Um, the carbs particularly were a struggle. So I would say up until maybe six to eight weeks, I was craving, you know, biscuits and chocolate. Um, I really, really struggled, but I didn't give in. Um, and, uh, and now I'm just not interested in them at all. So the cravings have, have gone away completely, not bothered about sugar in my coffee. I've, I've even cut out coffee to a large degree now as well. Um, Cause I think it's probably healthier to avoid it if you can. Um, but if I do have a coffee, I have it black and I have a big lump of um, butter in it. And do you like kind of mix that up or you just put the butter in it and wait for it to kind of melt away? I, I give it a good old stir and, and it eventually dissolves. Oh. And it just gives it a bit more body. Um, 
And initially when I started the carnival diet, I did have coffee and um, I would kind of use that as a, as a meal because I thought, well, if I'm putting butter in it, then that's going to keep me going. And it did. And it didn't, I have to say, it didn't seem to affect my tummy negatively in any way. But I gather now, because I've listened to Bella, the steak and butter girl, um, I follow Dr. Ken Berry, um, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Sean Baker, uh, Dr. Philip Avedia, all those wonderful, amazing people. And um, I gather that I've, what I've learned is it's best to, if you're going to have coffee, it's best to have it after a meal as like a dessert. So I'm trying not to start my day with a coffee and I'm trying to keep the fast going until sort of two or three in the afternoon and then we eat. Then we'll have our brunch, if you like. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, at this stage, you feel like this is kind of the way it's going to be going forward for you? Mm, I think it is. Um, it's funny. So, you know, people ask me, so are you going to, they say, are you still on that crazy diet? <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah. You know, my dad's like, are you still, are you still on it? I said, well, well, I am. And they think I'm going to come off it sometime soon. And I'm like, well, why would I do that if it's going to make me sick? You know, that would just be totally bonkers. I'd have to be insane to, to stop doing something that's working so well. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's, this, is, this is me now. I'm a carnival. <laughs> so it's not, it's just so nice to find a way of eating that when you eat something, you're not thinking 10 minutes later, okay, what's next? What's the next thing I'm going to eat, right? Yeah. It's so you're not bound to the kitchen, you're not bound to the supermarket, you're not bound to the convenience store anymore. It's just like no. I've eaten, I'm happy, I can go to work, I can do whatever I need to do, and then I'm I'm just I'm stable. So yeah, so it's it's uh it, it's amazing that food is is no longer like a focal point of our of our uh, world anymore, if you like. So um, you know, and particularly for for my other half because he needed to lose a little bit of weight. Um, it's never been much of an issue for me because I've always been lucky enough to be at my, my target weight, but he has struggled. So the carnival diet is so black and white. There is no gray area. And I think that's been a big help for him. Um, you know, that it is just so much easier to stick to this. And um, it is, it's amazing that you know, food, as I say, isn't isn't the focal point. I can drive past McDonald's now and I don't look twice. Um, but, you know, so many people, so many young people, they they spend a lot of time in McDonald's, fast food restaurants. And, and now, you know, I just, I'm so much more aware of what goes into all that food. I mean, I want to call it junk because a lot of it is. And you just think, oh, my God, you know, you're... you're it, all these people are just putting all this rubbish into their system day in day out there's no wonder that disease is is on the rise and uh, obesity and, uh, and diabetes you know it's 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 so sad but it's just the way of the world isn't it the the, the grocery stores are chock full of rubbish basically highly processed sugary carbohydrate stuff that just makes us sick it's a, a crazy world we live in. I, I can't help but think as well, like the, the fact that the younger generations have got easier access to this food than we ever did. Like, I mean, when we were growing up, a parent, th there wasn't this much processed stuff around and even the stuff that we wanted, the chocolate or whatever, yeah. par our parents couldn't afford it the same way that parents no. can afford this stuff now, right? And um, um, it just feels like the access to it is so easy. They're getting all these diseases, but they're also developing so many mental health issues that are probably related to diet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, mental health, I, do, I don't know what the, 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 the rate is of mental health problems, but I have a feeling it's, got, it's on the rise as well. It's got to be with social media the way it is and 
and you know yeah it's uh it's a crazy world i don't know how 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 we can stop it because i think that, that a lot of these the big food companies that are making a lot of the this crap are also owned by big pharma or oh, sorry they own big pharma a lot th so they they've got like this joint you know we keep feeding crap to the masses keep them sick and then we'll keep providing the drugs i mean what a fantastic way to make money it's all rolling in isn't it both sides <laughs> sorry that's a very cynical way of looking at it but it does look a bit like that when you when you look at the big picture mm. we when you think that a lot of the food companies are owned or or maybe partially owned by um tobacco companies you know the, um, it's kind it, of the same playbook right yeah 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 exactly it's just a crazy world i don't know what we can do to to resolve it i don't know if there is anything we can do to resolve it but i guess education like this and then you know get the message out there and try to uh try to try to let people give people the message and, and, and then they can make their own informed decision. Imagine someone comes to you, one of your friends and says, look, I know I said this diet sounded crazy before, but you know, you and your husband seem to be doing so well and I want to give it a try. What would you recommend to them? Um, I would recommend doing some research you know, just trying to understand the foods that um, are going to potentially help them the most, i.e. beef, <laughs> butter and eggs, and just to, to try and, uh, I suppose that the easiest way would be to go into the pantry and clear out all the stuff that you are not going to want anymore. But it would be quite extreme, but it would definitely make it easier. I mean, we've got kids that are living with us, older children, but they're still living with us. So obviously we can't get rid of everything because they are not on this diet. They don't want to do it. They're not interested. They're very, they're, they're fascinated um, and they're incredulous, I think. <laughs> and they think we're bonkers. Um, so, but yeah, there would be anarchy if I got rid of all their, their lovely, sweet, carby stuff that they like to eat. Um, but I think if you were going to embark on this, and you could do that, then that would be make it easier because then you would have no temptation, which would get you over the first few weeks. Um, and I have, I'd have, keep loads of butter in the fridge because um, I, I have loads on my plate every, with every meal to try and get the fat up, the fat intake up. That's something that's been quite challenging is to get into my head that I need to eat more fat because for, 60 years <laughs> I've been I've been you know thinking oh no I mustn't have butter I mustn't have fat that's bad and now of course it's completely turned on its head um so yeah that that's been a very interesting journey to come round thinking actually no I need to eat more fat um so I would advise anybody to just try and get that out of their head as well you just got it you've got to up the fat not decrease it um and uh yeah just i would just you know look forward to the benefits because within days they they will i know that they would feel the benefits from it you know the inflammation would go would start to go and you just feel so much better and i'm sure that that um mental health is affected as well your your mood the way that you um, look at the world is more positive. I'm sure that that's affected too. Yeah, and if anybody's thinking about it, I would say you've got to do it. You've got to go for it because it is life changing. Yeah, I'm. I'm really interested in the the butter thing. Oh really? Just because, um, just because, like, I I eat butter, but I, not as much as when I first started carnivore. Because you know, if I eat too much, then it's then it's a little bit dangerous for me, and I start putting weight back on. Right. But the the butter thing really interests me because you know for as you say for years we're told the opposite thing we're told margarine 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 and and healthy canola oil and all and this that stuff thing. is evil. Hmm. Uh, I remember um, when I was traveling with for work 
at some parts of that travel, I was living in the same house as my boss. And I remember one morning when I was in America, I'm sitting having breakfast and I've got the margarine and I've got the Vegemite or the Marmite or something on top of it. And um, my boss said to me, that stuff's going to kill you, you know. You should be eating butter. And I'm like, you're crazy. You're <laughs> crazy. This margarine <laughs> is much better than the butter. And here was I, I was eating plastic and telling him he yeah. was crazy. <laughs> Uh, it is bonkers, isn't it? The thing mm. is, we've heard all this rubbish on the TV because it's all marketing. That's all it is. It's marketing. It's like that. The, the, um, I don't know who introduced it, but the triangle, the, uh, the the carbohydrates at the bottom, and that should be the most of your diet, and the grains and the vegetables. And I gather that was just a marketing exercise. And and yet suddenly we all we're all living by it and making ourselves ill. It is it's crazy. The the, the longer I live, the more I realise this world is just crazy. <laughs> I um I, I like what Dr. Gary Fetke says about the pyramid. He always says, if you eat by the pyramid, you'll die by the pyramid, and along the way you'll look like the pyramid. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> Always, Absolutely. whenever someone talks about the the pyramid, that's that's the first thing that comes to mind. Is his quote? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's a so, next so, to <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Jules, um, you have a YouTube channel. Can you tell us about that, please? I do. But it, it's just because I'm so excited about this um, about this whole carnival way of eating and what it's done for me what it's doing for me what it's clearly doing for millions and millions of people all around the world um and um so i just thought i've got to try and help you guys on your quest to get the message out there so um my my uh, youtube channel is tiny and we it's got two videos on it <laughs> carnival jewels <laughs> Um, and I've actually done a little website as well because that's something that I've done a lot of in the past is build websites. Um, so I've got a little uh, website called Carnival Diets HQ, I think it is, but the URL is carnivaldiets.co.uk. Um, and it's just purely because I want to get stuff on the internet. I want to get stuff on YouTube in my own little way to help spread the word um, because... The more people of us, the more of us that do this, the more information will be out there and hopefully more people will see it and think, ah, oh, maybe I should try it because maybe it would help me. Um, and then they'll start down their own journey and and they'll get better because we know we all know that they will get better if they stick to this diet. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so I'll link to your YouTube and your website below in the show notes. Oh, um, great. Jules, thank you so much for coming on and sharing thank your you story. For I really me. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. I've really, and I'm, I'm very um, appreciative, very grateful that you have me on, Dave. Thank you so much. Jules, how did you find. Hang on a second, sorry. <laughs> So, Jules. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jules, how did you find Carnivore? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>